Okay, let's go to lesson 11. We'll read through the words. Amen. Amen. Amen or truly. <laughs> Biblion, Bibliu, Ta Book. Biblion, Bibliu, Ta Book. <laughs> Daimonion, Daimoniu, Ta Demon. Daimonion, Daimoniu, Ta Demon. Dekamai, I receive or accept. Dekamai. I receive or accept. A P with a genitive means on, upon, over. A P with a genitive, on, upon, over. A P with a dative is on, at, in addition to. A P with a dative is on, at, in addition to. And a P with the accusative is on, over, toward, for. A P with the accusative is on, over, toward, for. So you can see a P means on. But on in different senses. And that's what you have to look at. Eti means yet or still. Eti means yet or still. Therapuo, I heal or serve. Therapuo, I heal or serve. It do, behold, see. It do, behold, see. Men de, on the one hand, on the other hand. Men dead, on the one hand, on the other hand. Ute, neither nor. Ute, neither nor. Aftelmas, aftelmu, ha, I. Aftelmas, aftelmu, ha, I. Pollen, again. Pollen, again. Te, and. Sometimes you have te and te. Okay. Te, 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 and. Tapas, tapu, ha, place. Tapas, tapu, ha, place. Tate, then. Tate, then. Now, we did these last week, but it's good to go back through these, and we'll do 12 also, and hopefully 13. But uh, just to reiterate some of these matters. Now, notice these are the secondary middle passive endings. What are the primary? Excuse me, what are the secondary active endings, by the way? And with an active, strong sound, the strong voice, everybody says, on, es, ed, on, et, on. On, es, ed, on, et, on. Secondary middle passive. Amen, u, ta, amatha, es, anta. Primary active endings. O, A, A, Amen, Et, Usi. Primary middle passive endings. Amai, E, Tai, Amatha, Este, Antai. Okay, good. Amai, E, Tai, Amatha, Este, Antai. You should be able to get through these pretty quick. You know, put a, put a, put a flame under your hand or something. You know, I can do these pledges. We used to do the guys, you said do the alphabet. So, you know. O ace a amanete usi amaya tamathis the antai amin si anes a amati an amin u tamathi asnade. If you get through them quickly, you won't burn your finger. Okay. We can try that next week. Can help. I think that's learning vocabulary. Check what is it? I'm trying to match them. You do that for what? I said I did that to learn, or not vocabulary, to learn the alphabet. Did you? Yeah. Okay. Well, for for some. Uh, college thing or No, for here. Oh, for here. For no in my house. <laughs> <laughs> These are things that Ben does by himself, folks. <laughs> okay. Me, me and uh, Adam and Colby did it one day. <laughs> now, all right. That makes sense with two of That is, the sound is coming through okay on this, right? Watch this one. Okay. <clears throat> Let's look at the imperfect middle passive endings. <laughs> Elu amen. Elu u. Eluita, Eluamatha, Eluise, Eluantai. Now notice how it forms. What is the stem? Why is the epsilon there? Past. It was augment to indicate past. past. The endings are secondary middle passive endings. Ame, u, eta, amatha, esta, anta, right? 
That's how words form. I could put in here any number of stems. Graf, you know, and so forth. Uh, este, of course, with that, something happens. What? Because if you begin a stem, if the stem begins with a vowel, you lengthen the vowel, you do not reduplicate, excuse me, you do not augment the vowel with an epsilon. Okay? So stems that begin with a vowel are lengthened, stems that have begun with a consonant are augmented, augmented with an epsilon, right? That's how it works. Again and again and again and again. <laughs> so. Uh, now, the adverbial chi we went through last time, remember chi can mean even or also, right? We talked about that. Correlative constructions, we went into the ways in which you have things like ta, ta, u, ta, ta, men, da, all these correlative and contrastive ideas. Then we have the sentences, which you've done, right? Okay, well, that's good. I'm glad to hear it because we'll have some of you to translate. Number one, Cyrus. Read the Greek. Hoi. Atha Lamoy. Atha Moy. To February. Uh, there are few on ta. Mm -hmm. To Lago. <coughs> to Prophetu. 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 Good. Okay, uh, let's do some translation. Okay. The eyes of the children were being healed by the word of the prophet. Okay. The eyes of the children, is that correct? No. No, the children oh, singular. Child. child. Good. Child. No. Yeah, good. Child. Correct. Once. Just singular instead of plural. What would it be if it were children? <coughs> yeah. Tus technus. If it were accusative, it might be. Tone techno. It actually wouldn't be that either. It's a neuter. Yeah, ah. Oh, that Techno. Techno. So this is a new one to too. It would be tone techno if it were a, the same function with a plural. Right? Okay, good. <clears throat> so the eyes of the child uh, parse at their par uh, uh, excuse me. They're a few Okay. Uh, onta is parse of particles. <clears throat> okay. Um, Imperfect middle passive indicative um, third person <coughs> plural mm -hmm. um, from Theru or Thera Thera Puo Pu or Puo Thera Puo okay means thank you or sir in okay. some case it'd be now, is it a passive or a middle? You said it's a middle passive form, but which is it? <coughs> passive or middle? In this situation, I would have to say passive. Okay. If it were middle, it would be the eyes of the child were... <coughs> and it's possible. It's possible. Were healing themselves by the word of the prophet. Which is not happening. But you don't have an N here expressing a dative. But you do have a dative case, mm -hmm. which can be instrumental in nature, not just to. Mm -hmm. See, it's not the eyes of the child were being healed to the word. See, it's by the word. Instrumental concept, right? In the dative. Okay? Could could you put a, a is it a pupo? Is that, is that the one that has <coughs> Well, he could put Upa. Or Upa, yeah. Upa right. with the genitive to express personal agency, but then would Lagos be personal agency? Um, Probably not. Now, hey, remember I said Upa sometimes can express impersonal, and the dative sometimes can express personal. It's just not the normal use of it. Yeah. And you always agree. Follow this, pro follow this procedure. Follow this, uh, this method. You follow the more normal unless you're compelled by the context to do otherwise. 
It's not that you just want it to be otherwise. <laughs> Which it be, wouldn't fit my theology better. No. You must be compelled by the grammar to take it other than normal usage. That's true with word meanings, and that's true with grammar. You follow what is normal. In other words, when I come across an imperative, you don't know what these are yet, but when I come across an imperative and indicative, and it looks identical in Greek, a certain one, not all, but which one is it? I follow indicative unless it won't make sense. And then I go with imperative. And by normal, you mean majority? Well, you can't count a majority. I mean, you, know, you don't go through and count how many imperatives and how many indicatives there are based on somebody's study. No, I meant when, you, when you're talking about... What makes sense? Yeah. Uh, generally speaking, one thing will make sense more than another. Okay. Indicative is talking about which, what is actually occurring. Imperative is a command for something to occur. I'll take the example. I mean, for, for, for the team of Plagrathus, uh, uh, what is it? Uh, uh, Plagrathus' death in uh, Ephesians 5. Uh, stop, and actually, it's sort of interesting in Greek. Stop being drunk with wine. It didn't say do not start being drunk. It says stop what was already happening. Stop being drunk with wine. Usually, most of the time, translated that way, but that's what it is. Why not? That makes so much more sense. I mean, that's stop, yeah, stop mm -hmm. being drunk with wine, but be filled with the Spirit. He could say, stop being drunk with wine, but you are being filled with the Spirit. By the, but it, it, it's clearly an, ex, an exhortation passage. And uh, I'm pretty sure that's true. I can check here and see for sure. But um, the... Um, the imperative, again, it's just in that situation, uh, makes more sense than an indicative because of the nature of the passage. Yeah. <clears throat> because he's using a he's using a uh, an imperative here instead of a, a what is known as a subjunctive. If he wanted to say do not begin in Greek, he would have used a subjunctive. Since he's using an imperative, he's saying Stop what has already begun. Makes a difference in translation. But most translations will just translate the same. It doesn't matter if it's indicative or, excuse me, it doesn't matter if it's a subjective or an imperative. Most people just translate it, don't be drunk, which doesn't convey the true sense of the meaning. <clears throat> but the, uh, and here's the big passage over in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Just to give you another example, real quick. That is, every translation I know of mistranslates this, in my opinion. Here I stand. In against all the translations in existence with my meager knowledge. Even the message? <laughs> Almost any way they do translate, I will translate another way. But the uh, verse 31 or 1231. Now, the reason why I think this is true is because I think what translators regularly do is instead of facing every single verse afresh, just in the Greek, facing it afresh with the grammar and the lexicon in hand and nothing else. They go from their memory of what they've already heard in English time and time again and what other translations continue to regurgitate time and time again instead of reevaluating it based on a study. It says, Zelute de ta charismata ta mezana. And it's translated, uh, desire, the word zelute here from zelao, desire the greater gifts. Now, you normally take a thing as an indicative unless you're forced to by the imperative. And is that what Paul's saying? <clears throat> he wants them, he just got through telling them that the gifts are given by the sovereign disposition of the Holy Spirit. And then he tells them to desire them. That make a little sense to me. Mm -hmm. That the Spirit parts them as he wills. But then he says, ask for them, desire them. Doesn't make any sense. And, and particularly the word zelato here used in the Greek when you check out the meaning of zelato, which doesn't always express negative, for sure. I've got to be fair here. 
I have seen it not express a negative. But generally speaking, it expresses a negative idea of, of an improper desire. And I think the point is that these Corinthians are desiring gifts that are maisonot, those that they view as being greater than others. And that's the problem. That's why he says, and yet I'll show you a way according to excellence. And what is that? Mm. Not desiring greater gifts. <laughs> that is, desiring gifts to function with love. And that's why I think when you start 14.1, you have the same expression. Diokete tain agape. Pursue love. But you're desiring charisma. Uh, excuse me, pneumatica. Uh, the word found in twelve one. I wrote an article on this. If you want to read it, it's on my website. But zeluted ta pneumatica, malan dehena profetute. All the way through here, he's contrasting tongues, prosy tongues, prosy tongues, prosy tongues, prosy. And you can read my article. It's rather me going do all that now. But pursue love, but you are desiring pneumatica. I was saying this a moment ago. That was stupid. <coughs> I was saying that way. Pneumatica. I, don't know, I was saying pneumatica. I don't know how to that. Pneumatica. Mala. So <coughs> pursue love, but you're desiring pneumatica. But I would rather that you prophesy than desire pneumatica. Why, he says? Because one who speaks in tongues <coughs> benefits himself. One who prophesies benefits the church. It's a contrastive idea. So does it make any sense here to translate this as an imperative? He's not asking them to desire pneumatica or charisma. He's asking them to desire those things that benefit the congregation, not themselves. And if you take it the other way, he's doing, he's asking them to do the very thing he tells them not to do. I've often wondered why people don't go back and just read the Greek. Anyway. <laughs> They're content with what's <clears throat> what they believe. Well, well, I think I think if you they just pick up, it's been done that way again and again, and people just pick up their memory in English. <coughs> and I'm saying it would help just to refresh yourself and just read from the Greek and Hebrew and not take your Latin, take your grammars, and just translate from the text. And forget about English translations until after you've done all your translation. Then look at the English and see if there's any problems. That's work, though. If that's what I would encourage people to do, huh? I said that's work. Yeah, that's a lot of work. And, but that's what you should do. That's why I think a pastor, before you actually read an English text, before you read an English text for a sermon, you should do the Greek or Hebrew work first. When you've got all your Greek and Hebrew done, all your exegesis done, before you even look at a commentary, you've done your, you've done your historical studies, you've done your culture studies, you've done your syntactical studies, you've done everything you can do grunting it out. Then you open commentaries and translate at the end of the process, not at the beginning. Why? You will be skewed by the... Yeah, you just become a parent. You become a parent of somebody else. You need to, first of all, struggle with the language, struggle with the issues yourself, and then I use commentators <coughs> and translations to check myself to see if I'm really that far off. But you need to do the digging yourself. But a lot of people, you know, they just order sermons in from the sermon service in Portland anyway. Is there a website? <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> I just get it off yours. Is, is there a... Yeah. I, I'm, I'm interested in this half, but I mean, is there some sort of a, you know, team method to, to you know, pastoral, you know, you know, that's a lot for a pastor to take on each week. And, uh, and I recognize it, I mean, but I'm just, I mean, you know, what's the practical application of what you're saying? I have an application the pastor's primary responsibility is preparation and prayer right. of the Word. Any congregation that thinks the Bible is the most important thing that a pastor can do <coughs> will give them adequate time for a study. If they think the Bible is just a good thing to get around to on Sunday morning if you, you get the time, then, then they will give them time for study. So you, you have time, you don't. You just have to make that decision. Matter of fact, you have to settle that going in. But it was it realistic? And I, and I, I mean, I, maybe it is. I like to think it is that 
you know, I, I like that sort of exegetical teaching. I mean, exhaustive, expository exegetical teaching you know, that goes on each Sunday. And, uh, you know, the reality is that the pastors, you know, and just here, you know, that have to put in, you know, an unlimited, I mean, already enormous hours. But, I mean, when you have a team concept and you say, you know, I have an elder or deacons or some people that are well-versed in this, is that, is that? I think you, you just, I, I mean, I know I'm talking, you know, say, well, you're not realistic. But I, I'm just saying. First, I think you might listen. be. I just want to know how you. But I'm saying this is the way it ought to be. You ought to set it going in. If you're not going to do this, then forget. Drop out of seminary now. <clears throat> go off and do an MBA in marketing. Take a couple of counseling courses. Do an MBA in marketing. Marketing. Take a few Bible classes to get a general gist of the Bible, and go pastor a church that that it doesn't care about the scriptures. <laughs> I'm being really dead serious. There's a reason why that we started this seminary. And if I were to in any way back up at this point, I'd see no purpose to continue this school. We had a board meeting last night and I told them they were asking about what I was doing. I said it's taking a lot of time. And I feel like I'm not covering all the bases, especially the visitation. And they said you stay in the class and we'll cover what you need, just let us know. All right, see, that the people that understand what you need to do. And that, see, you be thankful for those people. You've got to make these decisions. All, there are all sorts of tough decisions in life, guys. You'll always be asked to compromise. Compromise is easy for people. I mean, lots of people like to compromise. Athanasius was asked to compromise in Nicaea. Eusebius of Caesarea by the Sea, which many of you will visit, beautiful area, resort area, was a compromiser, wrote an ecclesiastical history, very famous. But Eusebius was a semi-pelagian, uh, no, I mean a semi-arian. He wanted to go with a compromise position. Athanasius' view basically was no compromise. <laughs> Luther's position basically was, unless you can show me with clear reason, our scripture, <coughs> that I have somehow made a mistake, I'm here. No move. Now, it's not to say you couldn't be convinced, but you can have to convince him of something that, that has a basis in authority. In other words, he's either, he's either thinking cockeyed or that the scriptural passage somehow is not understanding right. But other than that, no move. And we've got to learn to just take our stand sometimes and do it. Um, the apostles who serve as the precursors to the pastors in the church, you know, the elders in the church, said that they could not set, a, even as important as it was to take care of the widows. That was an important task. It wasn't a menial task. It was an important task. To care for people's physical needs was an important task. Not small. They said we would not do right. They understood that they must give themselves to prayer and study the word. That's the first task. Now if they get the first task done, they'll move to the second task. But the first task has to be done. That's why they even start out with deacons. It's because they recognize that you cannot compromise on this question because the Bible is more important than other issues. The Bible deals with eternal questions. Even as important as physical needs are, they're only temporal. <clears throat> why set aside an eternal verity for the purpose of a temporal need? Does make any sense? Bad use of time, bad use of effort, bad use of skills and training, bad use of what you do. You've got to make these decisions in life. So, again, if uh, if you do your work, you do your work. If other things don't come, they don't come and go. If there's if people say we're not being met, you say well, you know what are you doing? Because that's why you've had other people come to the side to do the task, meeting physical needs. So that the ones who were in charge of the spiritual needs of the congregation could give themselves to prayer and to study and preaching the word. That's what they're tasked with. That's what we're trying to do here at this church. It's taking a while for people to understand. <laughs> at the church we're right now. Well, you know, the fact is, uh, there are lots of physical needs in the congregation, and they do, in fact, need to be met. There's no question about it. They do need. But the primary task of the, of the elders in the church is to provide the spiritual and doctrinal oversight of the church, which are more important than the physical needs, as much as people think they are not. 
But the Bible is more important. You do not set aside a primary task to do a secondary task. But there, the secondary task needs to be done. That's why you need to have people come alongside you who are willing to do those tasks. So that's where I'm at. Am I pretty plain on this? Okay. All right, now, uh, let's go back to Greek text here. What are we translating? Huh? Okay. Uh, number, uh, we're in the odds, right? Yes. Number three. Those people listening by uh, by uh, Cam, uh, now you can open your books again. <laughs> number three. Uh, Anna? Tauta, a grafranta, en to biblio, tu namu, humes de uk, a do not stay, blepin auta. Uh, these things were being written in the book of the law. Uh, Butter and you were not being able to see them. <clears throat> I, I want you to do that again. Okay. Um, Say it again. These things uh, were being written. Were being written in the book of the law. Of the law. Okay. Uh, but you were not being able uh, to see them. Okay. What? Uh, what? What's the issue there? First of all, you didn't translate the intensification of the pronoun. Which is who me? No, who makes? Humanities, yeah. But you yourselves. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> now, when you translate, we're not being. What are you trying to translate there? Parse that for me. Uh, and do not say is. Okay. okay yeah. Is that? You mean the parsing? Uh, imperfect. Which means what? In reference to your translation. Uh, it's translated as an active. An active. And you were saying. So you, when you're saying you were not being. Now what are you trying to express? Well, you were not able. But well, no, I'm just. I'm not even. I'm trying to get you to think it through. What are you saying? <coughs> I was trying to get the continuous. In there. Okay. You were trying to get the continuous action in. Yeah. Right? Okay. Good. You were not being able, you're trying to say that you were not able on a continuous basis. Yeah. You're not being able to see them, these things. Okay, good. Fine. So is that supposed to be its present? No, it's an imperfect. Okay. You, you were. Okay. Not you are. You were. Number five. Uh, ten. Go behind. That kingdom was evil, um, but both. But. Yeah, but um. Is there another? Go to go to the Canaan here. Go to the Canaan. Yeah, that make more sense to you. That kingdom was evil, but. But that place, but, do I go to the disciples? But okay, go to the, the disciples side. Yeah, I'm were sorry, being that's, sent, that's but the disciples, disciple, disciple, but the disciple um, was being sent to that place. Or to that place, to even, that place. or also. Oh, right, okay. Okay, so that, that kingdom was evil, but the disciple was being sent 
even to that place. Uh, what about but even a disciple? Yeah, I said but even. We but, but even a disciple. No. But yeah, that sounds good. Because I, I know you're, you know, I, I know I say sometimes that Greek word order is not important, but you, you would not separate a, a chi that's far from, from its uh, from its word. But right, right at the beginning, but even. That's yeah. why we did it right with the Oh, I see. But even, even, even the disciple is being sent to that room. Well, thank Could you say it, but It even. sounds better. <laughs> we it's, were yeah, trying to make it, it make that sense. We just simpler. couldn't. We just couldn't arrange it the right way. Well, I don't know. Uh, yeah, I suppose in the sense of chi, you're functioning adverbally with a verb. Let's see. Let me, let me think on it just a moment. Uh, that kingdom was evil, but the disciple was sent even. The disciple was sent also. Well, see, actually, in that sense, the, the, the chi is functioning adverbally with the verb of hostility. How do we know that? Well, it's adverbial, so it has to function with the verb. How do we know that? Because you have two options. It's either adverbial or it's a conjunction. Oh. And you would not have two conjunctions occurring right together, but and. Mm -hmm. Could you say um, that kingdom was evil, but even to that place, the disciple was being sent? Yeah, you're just sort of translating it literally across the page. Yeah, I mean, that, that yeah, I mean, in the sense that you could just say, using the words like in a linear, you can say that kingdom was evil, but even to that place the disciple was sent. Or no, being sent. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, you can do that. But still, you need to understand grammatically that chi is either a conjunction or an adverb here, one of the two. So it's my and an adverb goes with a verb. So it's modifying. It's modifying. I still has to. It's right. an so it's if it's not even being sent to that place. Even was being sent. Yeah, because if it were conjunction, it would be odd because you don't have Allah as an adversative conjunction immediately followed by a connective conjunction. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You cannot have a conjunction uh, contrasting two ideas and immediately have them continuing the two ideas. Those are contradictory in nature. Does that make sense? <coughs> Okay. Number five. By the way, how's that take you? We're going to do it this morning. What time do we start? We started late, so. We're going to have a lot of time. How long are we going? 59 minutes. More? Yeah, we've got an hour. All right, good. All right, let's uh, continue with number five. We'll have Ben to do that. I'm just giving you five. Not six, I mean. Seven. I mean, uh, seven. Uh, Aaron, Kai, Ta, Techna, Tain, Phonain, Alton, Kai, Elegon, or Elegon, Elegon, yeah. yeah. Han, Alton, Artan, Afelaman, or, or Afelaman, mm -hmm. uh, Estein, Estein, uh, Estein, Pollen. Okay. <coughs> um, uh, this first word, I, I was just actually having a conversation with him about. Uh, that's, you know, is that from Iro? Remember, yes. It's mm -hmm. Iro with the Yoda, or the Iro. Yeah. The alpha lengthens to an eta because it's an augmented lengthen, a lengthening. Yeah. And the Yoda jumps underneath. So that's where you have it. So it's an imperfect, and it's first or third, right? Uh, yeah. Which one is it? Um, uh, first? Uh, third? Sorry. <laughs> it is one of them. <coughs> Are you asking me a question? No. Okay, then I'll just let you do the, do the answer. Okay, yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, it's a question mark, by the way. Yes, that's true. But is the question mark so much go with the first or second clause? Second clause. Well, the, the children, um, is it we're lifting up? We're lifting up and uh, their, both their voices and their, and we're saying. Okay. And they 
they were You're saying kai kai here both in. Yeah. That's what you're trying to get. The uh, children were imper imperfect. We're lifting, lifting up, up their voices. Their voices. And they were saying. And they were saying. Uh, quote. Um, uh, this bread. Um, mm -hmm. Or no, the same bread. Aha, uh -huh, good. Uh, and identity use of the unit. Of the oh, oh. <laughs> the same bread. Uh, <laughs> we ought. Oh yeah. Uh, we ought to eat the same uh, the same bread again. Okay. Question, question mark. Question mark. Should must we ought, must must ought we eat the same bread again? Should we? Yeah. yeah. Should we eat the same bread again? Right. Okay. Will you help us understand why it's or how we can identify it to be the same? Yeah, because it's... The Anytime you have an altos in an articular form, <coughs> like this, then it's going to be the same. You mean in between the article and yeah. the noun? Yeah, it's taking an attributive use. Okay. Probably can be. So that's the only option. The same. Can I try this next one? Is that okay? Now, by the way, what would it be, the, the, what would you say the bread itself ought to be? How would you do the bread itself? The bread itself? Yeah. Tartan or tartan? Tartan or tartan. Oh, that's, he used, he said that. We have a, here's a discussion on that back in the yeah. Antos area. Yeah. <coughs> 50, 50 chapter 5. <coughs> so we ought to use the same bread again, should we? Yeah. What do you say, uh, Because we'll give try the, the next one. You mean number uh, nine. eight or number nine? nine. Number nine, sure you can. Since I do 11, I tried to cast this one out. So. Um, su elegies tote pati theas etherapiu 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 tus af Ophthalmus. Thalmus. Thalmus. Remember here, I haven't put it, so it's Othamusu. Remember, it's all like one word. Othamusu. <coughs> Othamusu. Amen. De lego. Su. Soy. Soy. Theos. <coughs> Lai. No. Meli. 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 Ther. Therapeuane. Therapeuane. Tang. Cardion. Su. Okay. <coughs> okay. Um, you were saying then. You that yourself. Because of the su. When you, the pronoun is already in the verb. Right. So if you have a pronoun expressed there, and then like a subject, then it's going to be intensifying the verb. You yourself, singular. You yourself then, excuse me, you, you yourself were saying then. Were saying then. That God was healing your eyes. Correct. But truly, but, yeah, but truly I say to you, right, God <clears throat> was about to heal actually is about is about to heal your heart. Correct. Would for let go. Do you want us to still do the continuing action? Yeah. Yeah, perfectly. Okay. Truly I'm saying to you. I like you to keep that up because as long as you keep that up you'll keep remembering the present tense versus the imperfect tense versus the earth tense. This becomes all the more important as we learn more tenses. Okay. Because then I'll start hearing from you <coughs> Your understanding is between the imperfect and the presence and the errors and so forth. I see. <clears throat> okay, another thing's going to be covered this time. I really do want to cover more tonight than, uh, than I, you know, I'll be able to do if I keep this up. So let's do a little reading of the Septuagint, a little reading of the New Testament, a little reading of the English degree, and then we'll move into chapter 12. I tell you, I never look at these verses. And the New Testament would say two of you before I come. I always like to read them fresh. And that way we sort of experience them together. Good. <coughs> so, 
the eyes of the Lord are in every place. Stop you, sin. They, they are seeing evil and good. Does that make sense? You have the dead, you have the, uh, the tear there, but, uh, and they're seeing both, you can translate. Because the tear here is, is a, uh, is preceding. They are seeing both evil and good. Tear kai, okay? The book uses examine or consider for... Scopuo? Yeah. Yeah. Is that, is that because the word has more of a, like the idea is more like it's looking at it? Yeah, he's, he's bringing a, a, a nuance here because it really means to see, to see in an inquiring fashion. Sure, that's okay. what he's getting at. So not just a glance. It's not bad. I mean, for example, I mean, here's a good, let me just get the old dictionary out here. <clears throat> By the way, one of these days you're going to get one of these. They're fun to have. What do you say? <laughs> this is B-Day. Bauer, Danker, or Peter. So I'm going to look at the word uh, ska, peo. I look at the translation. Ska, peo is from ska pas in Homer and the inscriptions in Papyri. It's found in Esther 8, 12, and 2 Maccabees 4, 5, and he mentions the Testament of Naphtali 3, 1, and Philo, and Josephus, Justin, and so forth and so on. Then he says the future perfect of it is Scott Payson and Justin Martyr, for example, means to pay careful attention to, to look out for, to notice, with accusative of the person or thing, someone or something. And then he gives you an example here. Scott Payte tus huto peripatuntas, notice those who conduct themselves thus, for example, in order to imitate them. Then he mentions Philippians 3.17, Scott Payne tus tas dia. Uh, tasias apoyuntas, and he translates it, look out for those who cause the divisions. Look out, pay attention, see. The basic sense is to see, but it means to look or to examine, to pay, ten, uh, per, pay careful attention to. So there you have it. <clears throat> so he gives you a, a discussion of it to give you more sense. That's good. Now, uh, number two, uh, Ishmaelitai, Arkantai et gala ad aperuantai de es agupta. Ishma, let's see, that's a. Ishma, Ishma. And why do you make that the SH sound? Is that S and R? Is it sigma and mu together? Or? SH, is, I think of ish. It's <coughs> actually, in Greek, it's not an SH. It's is. Ismael Ita. Uh, I say yes, that's not the form for Israel, so it must be Ish, Ismael. Ishmael. Yeah. He began out of Galad, but uh, they were going into Egypt. I agree. I don't know what Galad is here. Gilead? Gilead? No. I don't know. It doesn't say. Genesis 37. I'd have to check the passage to see in Genesis. But he's going out of Galad and going into Egypt. Ismaelita. Uh, here we are, Proverbs 29, 26. Paloi You can translate this. Many are being healed. Prasopa hegumenon in the face of the governor. But uh, before the Lord, the righteous man is coming. Or something like that. Where the man will become right? <clears throat> well, before the Lord, it will be what? It, it ties third singular. Oh, yeah. And you're going to take Todd Dickey out there as an accuser? No. I would. I would. Uh, four. And Moses. Uh, you would know this. This is nearest. Moses wrote the words of the law, this law. Aha, uh -huh, there you have it. See the two Namu Tutu? Remember this? Predicate position? Mm -hmm. Attributive use? The words of this law and the book. 
uh, 5. Uh, behold. Or. Well, I was going to say it's odd to have a, have a thing. Oop, not behold. See not, maybe? Well, the gegraptai, that is a form of a perfect. You don't know that yet. Uh, it was written, and he wrote these things. Be, behold, he did not write these things in the book uh, of saying, of, let's see, of days of the kingdom. Of, oh, did he not? Okay. Behold, did he not write these things uh, in a book of words of the day of kings? I think what he's saying here is that uh, did he not write it? See, these things is the object in a book of words. He's saying in a, in a log, in a book of a record, probably. Record's probably the concept here. Log on. Anyway.